Morning, everyone. Uh, Jen, sorry, did you want me to start this off? Or are you gonna, or do you want to kick this off? Morning, everyone. This is Dave White, uh, VP of Textiles for Technion, and this morning I'm joined by Andrea Bam, our Director of Product Development Management. And uh, COVID-19 has changed has changed everything around us, and in particular, it's changed uh, material selection for um, for uh, commercial spaces, and in particular for corporate spaces. And as we the thought has gone from being how do we create and maximize productivity in today's world uh, versus how do we feel people, how do we make people feel safe coming back to work? And uh, as, as I know you're all aware, and I don't have to tell you, this is a situation that keeps changing. It's ever evolving and what we know about it uh, keeps, keeps evolving as well. Uh, case in point was the CDC, of course, recently changed its guidance and reiterated its guidance to a certain degree to say that the uh, primary transmission of COVID-19 is airborne, uh, while there was minimal chance of contracting it through uh, contact with surfaces. Uh, but that isn't um, but what we don't want to say. Our get, again, our goal is to create a sense of safety and make people help our customers make their and help their employees feel comfortable in coming back to work. And um, so today, um, that's what we wanna to talk to you about and share with you is uh, some of the ways and some of the different products that we have that can help you create that environment. So if we could go to the next slide, Andrea. Oh, sorry, my button's a little sticky here. <laughs> <laughs> of course it works in the run through but it does come on come on well and while, while we're getting that really you know the interesting thing that occurred to me the, in the irony of uh this uh whole situation is that the collaborative workspaces of today and our um as we developed our product line for the collaborative spaces, ironically, has prepared us really well for the, the workspaces of COVID-19. So ironically, collaborative has prepared us well for COVID. And by that, I mean, you know, when you think about the collaborative, when we talked about the collaborative workspaces of today, um, you know, before uh, we saw the, the need for collaborative workspaces, again, textiles just had to look pretty. You know, it didn't really matter. People weren't eating and drinking on it, and it wasn't subjected to a lot of the uh, stains and abuse and things like that that we would have had experienced in hospitality. But of course, the workplace evolved, and now people were eating and drinking together and while they're working, et cetera. And so we had to create textiles that uh, have those high performance attributes that you found traditionally in hospitality or even in healthcare. Um, so our product line, you know, we always talk about Loom and the brand of Loom being, you know, the ancient art of weaving, uh, incorporating uh, new technologies to make products that work better in the collaborative spaces of today. Those new technologies were primarily high performance characteristics. And so what you'll find is um, the need for products that are cleanable, wipeable, and durable. Uh, we have great options in our line already. And the nice part is you don't have to sacrifice color, texture, and pattern to get those kinds of products. So Andrea uh, is gonna share with us today, is gonna talk a little bit about the construction of coated fabrics and just some of the basics. Andrea? Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you. And we really appreciate, appreciate you joining us today for this webinar. Um, I'll just touch a, for a couple of moments on what exactly a coated fabric is. And it, coated fabric is really like a sandwich. Uh, you know, just to put it in, in very simple terms, it starts with the, the bottom or the backing of the fabric. Then there's a middle layer, you know, what would normally be the filling. And then there's a top coat and all three of those things are important. Uh, the backing is particularly important because that's where a lot of the stretch and the strength of the coat of fabric comes from. 
the back can really um, affect the upholsterability of the fabric. It can affect the hand or the suppleness of the fabric. And it can also impact the cost as well. Um, we always take the uh, backing into great concern whenever we're developing a coat of fabric. Most of our fabrics are on a knit base and that will really help with the, uh, the stretchability of the fabric. And then for the top coats, uh, that's where many of the performance attributes come in, especially that um, resistance to very strong healthcare grade cleaners that um, Dave mentioned when he was speaking about the, the concerns everybody's having nowadays, of course, in the return to the workplace, you know, among concerns of helping to uh, mitigate any spread of COVID-19. So the top coats are super important. Um, they can have specific qualities, you know, whether it's resistance to those cleaners or it's ink resistance or denim resistance. So there's a lot you can do with coated fabrics and they certainly serve a purpose. I, you know, I'm sure you, you all have many projects where at least some part um, of the fabric choices for that project are coated, you know, whether it's in an area of you know, food and beverage service or a very high traffic area, you know, they, um, these fabrics are really fit for a purpose. Hey, Andrea, let me make a quick comment here too. Uh, for those that have questions, if you would just send them in in the chat box and uh, I'll keep track of those and we can, we can try to answer those as we go along. Yeah. And, and it'd be great to hear from you because I know um, certainly from the, um, the application and the specifying uh, point of view, you know, there'll, there'll be some questions that we may not have been able to address with our first webinar. And one more thing I should uh, just um, note with uh, speaking about the basics of coated fabrics is the, um, there are certain after treatments uh, that will often get, you know, asked to recommend for a fabric, you know, whether it's a a stain repellent finish or a moisture barrier. And I just want to uh, let everybody know that any of those fabrics that have any kind of after treatment like a moisture barrier, they're still, they're not considered coated fabrics uh, and they don't have the performance attributes of a coated fabric. You know, if you're looking for something, you know, that that's truly uh, water resistant, uh, coated fabrics are really the way to go. And there's several different platforms. Uh, Loom, of course, offers three. So we have, uh, we're, we're beginning here with what's really our newest platform. And this is our silicone fabric called Top Coat. And we were, we were really excited to be able to launch that this year. It's our first silicone. And that's really been our preference for sustainability. Uh, silicone, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, more environmentally friendly than the traditional platforms of vinyl or polyurethane. And the really nice thing is, especially now, is by their nature, they're, they reject microbiological growth. So they're considered to be antimicrobial and antifungal. And uh, it, they get that silicone has that attribute without any additional antimicrobial finishes. Um, as many of you will know, especially if you were had a chance to join the Loom presentations about healthier workplaces, those added antimicrobials are classed as pesticides by the Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S. So they're they're not good for human health, and uh, we never want to promote anything like that. So silicone is is really uh, a great choice here. It can also be cleaned with bleach and uh, certain viricides. Uh, later in the in the webinar, we'll show you how to find those on the Loom website. And also, uh, at first for us is that top coat is inherently resistant to ink and it's also resistant to denim, tri denim dye transfer. Of course, you know, one of the um, challenges over the years, you know, especially for cast seating and, and conference room seating is that oftentimes, uh, of course, designers always, <laughs> always seem to uh, specify a really light color in the coated fabrics and with more people being able to wear jeans to work, you, you always have problems with denim dye transfer. And um, 
that can be easily cleaned from the top coat fabric with uh, alcohol wipes. Uh, we have more information about how to do that, of course, on the website, but it, it opens it up so you can specify and, and feel comfortable specifying a very light color in top coat. And we cover all of the leather colors in that color line, you know, as well as some brights and, of course, all of the best selling neutrals. And silicone has a, a beautiful hand. It's it's very soft. Uh, it, it feels very natural and it's very supple. And what you'll find is if you when you're going through the approvals is silicone. Uh, you know, because it's it's so supple, it has a higher range of approvals on the furniture pieces than all of our coated fabrics. You'll see that especially when you look at the Studio TK web, website. And while the price point is higher here, um, you know, it, it's really a, a reflect, reflection of the the quality of the of the material. Uh, you know, in the past, you may have had to specify an ultra leather, but top coat has all of those attributes, uh, plus more with the ink and denim resistance and also the antimicrobial resistance. Yeah, and I think, you know, to your point, Andrea, the, the way to position the silicone is, is an environmentally friendly and more humane alternative to leather. Um, and as she mentioned, Denim dye transfer is a real problem with anything light, whether whether you're talking about uh, coated fabrics or leather. And again, this uh, being resistant to that is great. It's very cleanable. Um, so it's it, again, that's how I would position it as an alternative to leather. Yeah, it's a it's a great one for that. Next, we have our polyurethanes, and this is the largest group that, that you're gonna see from the, the Loom offerings. We have quite a few styles now. We have uh, solid, of course, in our fine grain product, and then we also have some beautiful patterns that are proprietary to Loom. And with polyurethanes, you know, there's some variance in the type of resins that they're made from, so there can be varied price points here uh, for instance fine grain you know we start off at grade two and then we go into the grade fives with uh, the polycarbonate polyurethane so in in terms of quality of resins polycarbonate is the top and then there's polyethers just below that polyether is still a very good polyurethane uh, it just comes in at uh, at more of an entry entry level price point all of them, of course, are suitable for any high traffic areas. They uh, can be developed to withstand healthcare grade cleaners and disinfectants. And we, of course, have a list of what healthcare grade cleaners have been tested on those products. And that, that will be on our Loom website as well. You know, and you, you don't necessarily see the difference in the type of resin that a polyurethane is made from. But it, it's a really important fabric when you think about the longevity of the fabric. For something like uh, a polyether, it, um, it, it's good for moderate traffic use. Uh, it has a good lifespan. But if you're looking at very high traffic areas, you'll want to go with a polycarbonate and something that has a, what we call, um, a higher resistance to hydrolysis. And on this slide here, you'll see the poly sorry, polycarbonate styles that we offer. These all have seven to 10 weeks of hydrolysis resistance. And hydrolysis is really a breakdown of the structure that occurs when a material is exposed to prolonged levels of heat and moisture. Um, but in the past, some polyurethanes, you know, especially at the very low price points, they were subjected, or they, they were um, susceptible to hydrolysis, which is really a delaminate, delamination of the surface. Uh, we haven't seen those problems with any of our loom polyure polyurethanes. Uh, that's something we're very proud of. We, uh, we always test to the standard, which is from the Association of Con for Contract Textiles, and that standard is five weeks. And most of our polycarbonates are, have been tested to 10 weeks. 
and our fine grain, which you'll see in the next slide, has been tested to five weeks. So they're all really suitable for contract interiors. And fine grain, uh, grade two, as I mentioned earlier, very well priced. Um, it's a beautiful faux leather. Uh, this is a solid with, uh, you know, a very um, leather-like embossed to it. Um, the nice thing about poly polyurethane, of course, is that it's a little softer than, than vinyls. Uh, not quite as soft as silicone is, but this is a really good... Uh, entry point and you know again if you are uh you, you'll see this a lot on task seating this has been a, a good seller for both loom and technion for uh, ever since we've launched it yeah it's um so it's just kind of filling out our product line and and as you said it's a good entry point when they first started in when polyurethanes were first introduced uh they were polyethers and they perform, and again, the benefit of the polyether is it gives you a really soft hand, and it's it's relatively it's relatively inexpensive. Um, what happened was as they began to use poly polyurethanes in the healthcare applications, and they started using disinfectants, uh, that uh, that those uh, started to ruin some of the polyether constructions, and so they started uh, using polycarbonate, which is more expensive doesn't quite give you that soft hand as much as polyether, but does stand up much better to all those harsh disinfectants and chemicals in the healthcare environment. Yeah, yeah and, and we know that uh, those chemicals, they, they really do a number on your materials. So it, it's really critical to understand, you know, what's been tested on the fabrics and, uh, and what the result was and, uh, and it, if it's suitable for that purpose. You know, Dave can. Uh, Dave has a good story actually on, uh, you know, how how harsh some of those those wipes actually are. No, oh, yeah. So, so we were um, we at my former company we were standardized on a major hospital in Chicago, and we were having a problem with it. Not surprisingly, because they were using some of those disinfectants, uh, and they were using a wipe version of it called Sandy wipes. And we were in the hospital, we were in an oncology unit of all places. And um, my rep, who was this little, little Italian lady at the time, uh, took one of those uh, Sandy White little dispensers and grabbed one and started wiping her phone with it. And the, the reaction from the nurses was, was shocked. They're just like, oh my God, what are you doing? Stop, stop. And she's like, what? I'm just, just worried about getting sick. So I wanted to you know, disinfect my phone. And she looked at it and she goes, are you crazy? You know what those things will do to a phone case? <laughs> you know, and, and I'm just sitting there looking at it going, okay, we're here because those things are doing a number on the polyurethane. And then I look across this oncology unit and I just thought, oh my God. And they don't rinse it off. They leave it on the fabric and you have all of this is the middle of summer. So you have all these um, people that are in chemo their immune systems are really compromised and they're coming in contact directly with that, with those chemicals. It's just like, um, it goes back to what Andrea was saying was, you know, we always want to be mindful about um, not introducing more, uh, more to, and more harmful chemicals into an environment and doing more harm than good. That's my story. That's so you know, just just helps to emphasize, you know, that um, you know that those cleaners aren't to be taken lightly. You know, the um, if you ever have any questions about, um, you know, whether any of the codets will stand up to those cleaners, and you don't see it in the the resources listed on our website, you know, by all means, you know, uh, send us an email, and you know, we'll help you where where we can. Uh, but we do have a really extensive list published. Um, many of our manufacturers have um, been really helpful in testing those cleaners. Um, there's some brand name cleaners listed, of course. And um, there's also list, a list of cleaners, disinfectants, and sanitizers listed on the Centers for Disease Control website in the U.S., um, Health Canada has a listing as well. So those are all great resources when you're trying to determine, you know, what what's the best fit for purpose in the, the post-COVID-19 workplace. 
And, you know, and something you'll, you'll see a lot of is kind of a, a what we would call a return to vinyl. Uh, vinyls have, of course, been in the marketplace for years. You know, they were always the go-to coated fabrics until polyurethanes and, or polyurethanes got better and, and until silicones came along. Uh, they will still always have their place. You know, th there's a strong performance there at a really good price point. Vinyl's not subject to hydrolysis, so it's uh, always suitable for high traffic areas. It can be developed to withstand those health those healthcare grade cleaners and disinfectants that are very harsh. We've um, up to this point had our ultra durable vinyl in the line. Uh, it's been a stable for us for years, uh, still a great product. Uh, we will still continue to offer that, but we're really excited to be able to launch a new product with you today. Uh, this is our style called Decoy. It's a uh, brand new vinyl for us, uh, very high performance. It's phthalate free, it's BPA free, it's flame resistant free. Um, all of those things are, uh, are ultra durable is al already free of those chemicals as well, but I just, it's just worth um, reinforcing that our new launches as well. The great thing is we're going to have 46 colors here, which is really nice. You know, that means that, you know, when your designer or your, your dealer is looking for a particular colorway to coordinate with one of our loom wovens, they're going to find something in that palette because we've got, the, uh, the leather like colors, um, of course, you know, tying into all, the, all these coatings being a terrific substitute for leather. We have all of our best selling neutrals captured in here, as well as a lot of colors, you know, that can be used for accents. And we're really excited that we have a 100% approval across the uh, Technion upholstery pieces. And uh, we also have some approvals with Studio TK, uh, not quite as many with Studio TK. And that really comes back to the, the nature of vinyl. Uh, it's a little less uh, flexible and supple than polyurethanes or silicones might be. Um, it's not to detract from the fabric at all. It's just that um, it's just a little less stretchy. So you will see some things that it's not approved on, but it is, has been approved across the board with Technion Furniture. Uh, we did test it for screens. I think it's really important uh, to mention that right now. You know, there's a lot of focus on screens and new vertical pieces, you know, especially as customers modify their workplaces for employees coming back to work after, uh, uh, after the, uh, or I should say still during the uh, COVID-19 challenges. Um, the we do not have any approvals for screens for decoy and ultra durable. It's due to the thickness of the material. Uh, it, it's not that, you know, we need to have a particular vinyl or sorry, a particular vertical flame testing for it. It's just, it's too thick to wrap around the corner. So it's, it's strictly a, um, a manufacturing issue with it but uh, we do have that 100% approval across, uh, across the upholstery pieces. So we're pretty excited about that. So Andrea, while we're talking about approvals, that's an important thing to note here. So um, we, uh, this was a, an add to our product plan this year, uh, and obviously a very welcome one and, and needed one for, not only for the loom line on the cut yard side, but definitely on the applied side as well. Because of that, it will not, the approvals won't be loaded into the September catalog because we missed that date by a mile. Uh, they will be loaded in in January. So the question is, how can you find those approvals? Um, the easiest way to do that at this point would be to go to uh, the, Loom, the Loom website to our FAD, F-A-D, and you can find those approvals on there. The FAD is the Fabric Approval Database. There it is, and it looks, it'll, for those of you that have worked with uh, the Studio TK database, very similar to that. You can just pull up the furniture vendors, Technion, and then pull your product name, and then the Loom Fabric name, obviously decoy uh, at this point. So it, it's super easy to use. 
uh, very simple. But again, just want to make you aware that those approvals won't be loaded into uh, the approvals matrix matrixes until uh, January. The other thing, um, so you'll need to get a, a CR for this and a technoplate. Now, uh, what we're going to do is once we have our first technoplate, our first request to use this uh, as, a, as a custom, then we're going to load that technoplate number into the information on the MDC. So when you order a sample or you look up this product on the MDC, we're going to actually load the technoplate number into there. And then, of course, you have to get a CR for each color. Uh, as we get those CR numbers for each color, we're going to load that into there too. So uh, we are going to make it we're going to make it easy to use, and it should be pretty quick. Um, so if you have any comments back, you know any experience in using that and ways we can improve that process further, let us know. We're, we're again we're just trying to make it quicker and easier for you to use us, and uh, that I think will definitely help. And Ecoy has a great lead time. It's going to be two weeks or less. Two weeks right now is the worst case lead time. So we'll be able to uh, keep that in stock or get new stock of it uh, very quickly. Yeah. And this just touches on our specifications for decoy. Uh, the abrasion results for decoy are 500,000 plus. Um, normally with Loom, we test to 100,000 and we don't go above that because you know, it's according to the Association for Contract Textiles Guidelines, there's no sig significant uh, improvement in or uh, in indicator of lifespan when you go above 100,000 double rubs. 100,000 double rubs is already a very robust test result, but because it's a vinyl and we do know that many clients are looking for very high numbers when it comes to abrasion for those types of products, we chose to publish that on our, on our specs. So right now that's the highest number of, the highest abrasion result we have for our coated fabrics. And that picture, that image that you're seeing there is an example of all of our bleach cleanable products. Uh, and what's beautiful about that is you've got really gorgeous high-end textural patterns like schema, this one on the bottom, the multicolor pattern. You've got two up on the right is meta texture, a really textural uh, multicolor piece. And then on the left, uh, you have uh, an example of its lustrato, which is one of our panel fabrics can be used as panel or as uh, screens, obviously. And it's bleach cleanable as well. So uh, you, you, we have some really, really great bleach cleanable high performance options for you. Yeah, yeah performance luxury as we, as we like to call it. There we go. Yeah. Did we talk price, Andrea? Oh, we have a really good price for decoy. It will be Technion grade two, and it's uh, listed on our Loom, web, Loom website for US $29 per yard. There we go. Awesome. That's, that's a great price point, especially for that look. And this is uh, just a quick code of fabrics comparison. There isn't one platform that's better than the other. Um, you know, they certainly all fit a particular purpose. They're all good when it comes to abrasion resistance. They're, um, they're all good when it comes to cleanability. In terms of the very harsh healthcare grade cleaners, uh, top coat, which is our silicone, uh, would be your best one. And then the vinyl and the polycarbonate do very well in terms of resistance to those cleaners as well. Um, vinyl and silicone are not subject to hydrolysis or delamination, so they're great choices in areas of very high moisture. The uh, cost difference, uh, you know, we have a, a range of all price points here. Uh, top coat, of course, would be at your high end, but also the most upholsterable and vinyl and fine grain would come in at your entry level price points. And then the majority of our polyurethane, polyurethanes are going to come in at the mid range. Yeah. Okay. 
And just to uh, go back to concerns about COVID-19 again, a big question, of course, uh, that we've addressed in our earlier Loom presentations is question of do antimicrobial finishes kill COVID-19? You know, and we know that antimicrobial fi antimicrobial finishes do not kill COVID-19. And as I mentioned with top coat, you know, it's been part of Loom's mandate to really try to stay away from any antimicrobial added antimicrobial finishes. Um, you know, we know they're not good for us. They're not good for the environment. And top coat, as I mentioned earlier, it's inherently antimicrobial, which is a, a, a real bonus there. Decoy and anti and ultra durable, which are our vinyls, they are considered antimicrobial. The antimicrobial is not a top coat finish. Um, it has been added to the material, but it's been added to um, what um, Kara Lindsay likes to call a soup, which is, I think, is a, a really good description of it. So it's actually added in that mid layer of the uh, the coat of fabric sandwich, and it's it's added in during the manufacturing process. So it's not actually in the top coat. And many many of them are bleach cleanable. Um, we really just have one coat of fabric that's not bleach cleanable. That would be our color fused fabric, which is the uh, beautiful polyurethane um, that has the very textural finish to it, the one that looks like a fabric. And the only reason for that is in this, uh, because we have such a textured woven as the substrate, when that fabric is stitched there, uh, of course, when the needle goes through the fabric, you've got a little stitch hole at all of your seams. The only reason we can't approve bleach clean bleach cleanability there is just in case the bleach and water solution gets into those stitch holes, it could affect the substrate underneath. So while the top coat is is very robust, we just have to ensure that or we just can't say the fabric is bleach cleanable because of that um, that small opportunity for the bleach solution to get it to get in underneath underneath and with bleach cleaning of course um, care always needs to be taken to use the appro appropriate bleach and water ratio um, if you are uh, ever with a client you know and you don't have your binder card handy or one of the memo tags to look at on our loom website we always publish what that bleach to water ratio is on all of our specs. So it's quite easy to look up if you don't have access to it. And then clean according to the um, our care and maintenance on our website. And then of course, always rinse. Uh, we can't stress enough, you know, you'll always hear myself and Dave say, rinse, rinse, rinse. Always remove the bleach solution with clean water. Bleach res res residue uh, really needs to be removed because bleach of course is abrasive and it can add lead to the degradation of the fabric over time. And then we have, you know, those much stronger disinfectants and viricides. We do have coated fabrics, of course, that can be sanitized with viricides and other disinfectants. Always test on an inconspicuous area first, follow the manufacturer's instructions for use of the product. And of course, always rinse, rinse, rinse. The in, there are lists of disinfectants for use, um, you know, against the spread of COVID-19. These disinfectants are available on the Centers for Disease Control website. They're also listed on Health Canada's website. You'll see lots of brand names there, and you can also check to see what types of ingredients are in those in those cleaners and sanitizers. And also on the Loom website, we've got. Uh, resources in the news section and we've recently put together of course our design driven textiles crafted for a healthy work environment and uh, the last couple of pages of that document will show you which loom fabrics um, can be sanitized with with viricides and disinfectants and those are things of course like virex oxiver um, different kinds of healthcare grade wipes and we call out each fabric specifically so you'll you'll be able to use that as an easy reference
And this is an, a little snapshot, snapshot of where the Loom website resources are. We've got a care and maintenance section on our website where you, you will see general care and maintenance, you'll see care for high performance polyurethane, care for silicone upholstery, and after today, you'll also see the addition of care for vinyl upholstery. And in those, those documents, we will list the, the cleaners that have been tested by brand names. And you can also see what's been approved and what's been tested, but may not have been approved because it has a detrimental effect. So and, this is a look good. Oh, sorry, you want me to take this one? Yes, I, I was just going to say, yeah, you touched on this one earlier, and uh, but certainly this is um, bears repeating because this is a great resource for everyone. Yeah, this is our, as you said, this is a, this will look familiar. It's much like um, the same sort of database setup of approvals at Studio TK. We call it our FAD, Fabric Approvals Database. It is under resources on the Loom website. Um, so, and again, this is where you can find those decoy approvals uh, until we get them loaded into the uh, catalogs in January. So, great place to go. And then this too, the website is, is a great resource now. We made a lot of improvements this year to the website. Thank goodness our timing was, was, couldn't have been better. But here you can see, you can see if you're searching for coated fabrics, just go to uh, performance, click on performance and then the drop down there, you'll see coated is one of the options. So that's how you can search for coated fabrics. And then the next page will show you the, um, the really cool thing about the website is you can, search for environmental certifications and characteristics as well. So let's say you want uh, to search for a healthier hospital or declare certified fabrics or uh, mindful materials or red list, whatever it might be. You can search for those uh, under environmental certificates as shown there on the left. And I think, I think that's it. Andrea, I don't think I've seen any questions yet. So if there were any questions, please know we haven't seen them. If you have questions, you can enter them into the chat box. Um, while we stall for a minute to see if we get any questions, the um, this is uh, decoy is now loaded onto the Loom website. It's also available on the MDC. You can order uh, samples individually there. One thing I would really stress is. Uh, we've never we've never had anywhere near a 46 color color line. Uh, the closest thing we have is Percept, which has 28 different colors to it. So um, so to just dump a whole uh, set of memo sets on your clients at one time is probably a bit overwhelming. So uh, what I would recommend is use the digital cards that are on the MDC. You can also find them on the style page uh, of each style on the Loom website and email those to your client first. Have them determine you know, what color family are you looking in out of those 46 colors and then go on the MDC and order some samples and send them. It's just, um, it's a lot. I got my, uh, my launch package here with all these, these memos, which is fantastic having 46 colors, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot of memo samples, particularly when a lot of people are working out of their homes at this point. Yeah, and they're heavy. <laughs> they are, yeah. And 46 memo samples in, in vinyl weighs quite a lot. It does, and we're, and honestly, it's a part of what we're, uh, when I'm doing my trainings now, whether it's for new new employees or whether it's uh, continuing training at Deep Dish, it's really one thing we talk a lot about is moving at the speed of digital and, uh, you know, sending um, the, the tool on the MDC side is fantastic to send your customer digital cards, you know, so like if you sell a grade eight, you can just look up one of my grade eight options and you can email it literally within uh, a day or two and it will get to uh, your customers and then get you to an answer quicker about color texture pattern and what further samples they need. Mm -hmm. Oh, there are some questions. Jen, I think, did I hear you? 
Oh no. Okay, so Jen has some questions. Unfortunately, she has to she has to type them in. I don't know why we can't hear Jen. Let's see, are samples available to order on NBC? Yes. Yep. You can order samples there. Uh, no problem. Uh, the question about color fuse not being bleach cleanable, what Andrea was saying is uh, it's the the polyurethane on it is would be it's a it's a polycarbonate so it would certainly hold up to it. The issue is uh, the stitching. So what happens is the um, there is a sandwich layer in there that's a woven textile and that textile is not bleach cleanable. So it's possible that uh, the bleach and water solution would leak in through the uh, sewing holes, the holes created by the sewing, and then would discolor that woven uh, woven substrate in color fuse. Uh, oh, got a nice comment there. They love decoy. Great addition. Thank you. We we think it's going to be a really good addition too. We'd love to hear that. Yeah, we're, we're very excited, especially about the range of color. Um, and then there's a comment in here. Is there an info package we can give to clients? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by info package. You could, um, there's a couple ways you could go there. You could email, uh, you could email them the card from the MDC site. You could also send them a link, uh, copy and paste the link from the website uh, to your customers. The one little trick there I will uh, let you in on is make sure that if you have an, uh, set up an account with on loomtextiles.com, don't be signed in when you send that link because it'll come in blank. But uh, I think sending the link is a great way to probably the most effective way uh, to send. And then of course you can send the memo samples as well. Any other questions? Let's see, let me make sure I didn't miss any here. Are the info, oh, um, regarding the info package, it's a lot of information would, we, would be good to summarize. Um, yeah, I think the link would probably be your best bet to the website. Um, and then you could follow up if they want specific cleaning instructions, you could attach that as well from the resources section. Uh, okay, so it sounds like there's uh, no more questions. So we, Andrea and I wanna thank you very much. Uh, this is just a reminder that this webinar will be posted on my Technion by the end of the week. And uh, Andrea, is there anything else? Any other questions or comments? I just want to thank you. Thank everyone for uh, listening in. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, we hope you're excited about our decoy launch. Um, and please, you know, if you have any questions at all um, about coated fabrics after the fact, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to answer any of those questions for you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.